Hello, hello, good afternoon, everyone, or good night, good evening, wherever you are. How are we doing? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. Any technical difficulties going on? I think we're good. Nice to be back and live here with everybody. Welcome. My name is Shane, and we're all about smart home on this channel if you're new, uh, specifically Apple Home Smart Home. So we'll just hang out for the next hour or so and go through any kind of news and stuff like that, anything that might have um, piqued my interest in the last uh, week or so regarding the news. And yeah, just hang out, we'll do the Q&A, you guys can ask questions and stuff like that. So um, great to see everybody. Let's say hi to some folks real quick and then we'll kind of get things rolling. And uh, last week I did also put time codes after the live stream in the description uh, for those who watch this afterwards or want to watch this afterwards. So do let me know um, later in the comments or just however, if that's, uh, if that's something you're interested in. And I will try to do that from now on. It's a little tedious, but we can do that if that's something you guys, uh, especially those who watch afterwards who can't make it live might be interested in. But yeah, let's say hi to some folks. Lawrence, what's up, Lawrence? Pietro is here, finally online. Good to be here. Hi, everyone. Well, thank you. I'm glad you could make it. I see we got a lot of members in the house already, so uh, thank you guys for your continued support. I did pin a link if you do want to become a member to the top of the chat, so you can... Um, also, should be a join button somewhere. About five bucks a month, you can support the channel that way. Get into our Discord group. We do um, monthly live video chats and stuff also, so that's always a lot of fun. We should do one next week, usually the first Wednesday of every week after our live stream, we'll do one of those. So if you are a member, like I said, we got a lot of members here, um, come hang out during that. That would be awesome, and get in that Discord if you're not already. Uh, Kevin is here. What's going on, Kevin? George, Silverhammer Surveillance. What's going on, George? Hope you're having a good week, man. Uh, Bruce is here, Lone Star Trent, what's up? Lone Star Trent, excited about that Akara lock I see. <laughs> yeah, I remember you were posting over there in Discord about that. Travis is here, what's up Travis? I am doing well, I'm well. Uh, been a good week, busy, it's been a busy day. Been a very busy day. We have very beautiful weather right now, which is nice. I wish it would have came about four or five days earlier though. Went out of town for a Memorial Day weekend with some friends, with the wife and some friends and stuff like that. We're hoping to spend some time out on the water down at the coast in Beaufort, South Carolina. And oh man, we just had the worst weather. Uh, so we made the best of it though. Had a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of day drinking inside, <laughs> but it was all good. Uh, yeah, so nice weather now though. How you guys doing? How's the weather where you guys are at? Um, to do, we got unique, uh, Brad is here. What's up, Brad? How you doing? Let's see. Jeff from Michigan is here in the house. Client meeting ran long. Just joining. All right. Nice. Glad you can make it. 90 degrees here today. Beautiful day. Latest addition to HomeKit here. Fire TV with integrated support for HomeKit. All right. Nice. Steady building out those HomeKit smart homes, huh? Or Apple Home. Do I have to say Apple Home now? You know, old habits. <laughs> Old habits. I see Jeff said home kit too. So yeah, let's see. Weather is great here in Texas. Frederick is in the house. What's going on, Frederick? Hope, hope you're Frederick. Hope you're having a good week as well. Benjamin from France. We got oh uh, man, I don't want to butcher your name. I'm sorry. I will butcher if I try. I've, I'm so bad at pronouncing names. Forgive me. But all the way from Germany. Awesome. I actually lived in Germany for a few years when I was very, very young. So I don't remember much of it. But um, awesome, great. We got people from all over the house, all over in the house. Mike Q from Toronto, 88 degrees. Very nice. Um, and it's nighttime for Benjamin. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, B May here. Anyone having overheating problems with the Logitech or Wemo doorbells? Yeah, it's about that time of year. I guess we're going to start seeing some overheating problems, maybe. I have not. I've got my, let's see, right now I've got the Logitech installed and so far so good, I think. Uh, knock on wood, <laughs> but I have not had any issues with mine. I don't know if anybody else has, but yes, definitely that time of year we, we, where we might see some overheating issues. Um, curious to see how that Acara doorbell will do in extreme weather. It's supposed to stand up, you know, withstand it, but 
We've heard that before, so we'll see. I actually don't have mine on the front porch right now, so I moved mine to another location where it's like in the garage and stuff, so uh, no issues with that for me, but curious to see those who have that Acara doorbell installed uh, if you're having any issues. Death to home kit. I love all my cheaper Zigbee bulbs now in Apple Home. Thanks to Hughes Matter. <laughs> You're all about that Hue Matter uh, integration there, aren't you, Lawrence? Yeah, death to home kit. I don't know about that, man. We've been saying home kit for a long time. It's going to be a hard habit to break. <laughs> uh, as long as you guys know what I'm talking about. So big week next week with WWDC. What are your predictions? Yeah, I'm excited too. We'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later. Um, We'll get to do some Q&A and stuff and kind of go through that. I, I don't really have huge expectations. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit in, in the Discord server um, with the members. I, you know, I, I kind of take a, uh, I am, I'm very serious about the ex, my expectation management there. I just try really hard not to like look too much into all the rumors and stuff like that and I don't, and that way, when I don't expect much, I can be pleasantly surprised. So I hope I will be pleasantly surprised. I hope to hear some home stuff, some Apple home things come out of that. But um, I haven't really heard many rumors about any new like Apple home related stuff. But, you know, with the new version of iOS and iPad OS, we definitely might see some some new home kit and um, Apple home additions or changes. So we'll definitely be on the lookout for that. Still rocking the G4, George says. We'll see. Awesome. Yeah, we'll have to let me know how it does. What's the hottest it gets there? Curious. I know here it gets brutal, hot, brutally hot here, but mainly because of the humidity. So we really doesn't get over 100 too much except with the heat index. Once you add in the heat index with that humidity here, uh, we're you know, in the south, so it gets real humid. I mean, it can get, you know, with that heat index up to 115 or so with the heat index, just brutal, <laughs> the humidity. Uh, dude, let's see. I don't know if Hugh got the Matter public release. I don't know if they made it public or not. It was still on beta last I checked. Maybe they released it publicly, but I'm not sure. I'm sure Lawrence would know. Uh, Dustin, what's up, Dustin? My home kit home. Glad you can make it here. Nightstand mode for iOS. Rumor sounds interesting for the smart home. Yeah, I, I do think so. I you know, I wasn't too excited, to be honest, when I saw this. We can go ahead and jump into some things here. I got a few things. We'll talk about some new things. This was later down the list, but let's jump into it. And my stream deck is kind of out of whack right now, so bear with me here. Let's see if my screen is working. There we go. So that's something we'll get into. But over here, since Dustin mentioned this, we will talk about it. So this was kind of rumored, um, One, probably one of the really only home-related rumors, I guess you could say, is that when in, in landscape mode, supposedly if you haven't heard this, your iPhone lock screen will become kind of like a smart display. Uh, it looks cool to me. It's a little silly, you know, in regards to a home, you know, a home display for an iPhone. I don't really care too much personally, unless this comes to the iPad. Now, if this comes to the iPad, then now we're talking and that could really be probably a game changer. Uh, personally, I have created my own like home kit dashboard. Some of you guys following along have seen this. I create mine in uh, an app called uh, Viz Designer, and the main reason I've done that is so that I can integrate like my calendar in with all my HomeKit accessories, my favorite smart home accessories and stuff like that. And that's just not really something you can do easily any other way. But if they have a way to integrate a calendar along with all my home stuff, uh, maybe some notes or some other little widgets along with all your home accessories and you can really customize this, that would be a pretty big deal for me um, on the iPad. Again, don't care too much on the iPhone. What do you guys think um, about that? Uh, let's see. Hey, Shane. What, and we also got this same question uh, last week, actually. What are your three wishes for iOS 17? It might have been for WWDC last week's live stream, and I answered this. And... Uh, 
Yeah, so I'll go ahead and take this on. So what I said last week, first of all, is the ability to control your HomeKit hub. So pick which one is the primary hub and which ones are your secondary hubs. That would be ideal, would love to see that uh, feature come to iOS 17. Of course, mine are gonna be all home related, I think. Uh, would love to see, so would love to see that. And then somebody else pointed out last week the ability to add like uh, device restrictions for your, or person restrictions, some kind of restrictions for your smart home devices within home, the home app. That would be huge. Uh, for example, I don't want my kids to be able to turn off, you know, the you know, the water to the house or the sprinkler system or whatever, when you start integrating on these things into your smart home, um, really would be nice to have restrictions for certain devices or certain rooms for the people in your house. So I'd like to see that. Would also like to see uh, some modes. We talked about that a little bit last week. So some different modes where you could set up like maybe a guest mode or home and away modes. I think there's a lot that they could do better there in that regard. So those are probably some things I'd like to see changed. And it also looks like the question highlights, if you tune in every week, we talk about this, uh, you can put the word question in here. It's not really working uh, today. It looks like YouTube is not highlighting my questions. So I'll do a Q&A where you guys can submit questions directly here in just a few minutes and I'll try to make sure I get to all those questions. That way I don't miss anything. And uh, in the meantime, we'll just kind of talk about a few things and I'll get through some of the stuff and try to respond to as many comments as I can. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Dustin from my home kit home says I would definitely like to see more native iOS app integrations with home kit very nice and you guys go check out my home kit home Dustin has a YouTube channel and a, uh, a podcast so definitely go check him out and uh, I know he does a lot of focus on like the assess accessibility side of smart home and everything so good stuff over there love that he's doing a podcast now really great they could call it home center. Yeah, I don't really care. I don't care what you call it. <laughs> Just give it to us on the iPad. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, let's hope the iPad follows soon after. Yeah, so lately, last couple of years, it seems like we'll see a feature come to the iPhone, you know, lock screen, widgets, things like that. And then a year later, or so it comes to the iPad. So yeah, that feature definitely is something I'd like to see on the iPad. Just makes more sense there. Let's see. Would definitely want to see the intercom action in the home in home app. Um, oh, intercom action, I see. So like a button where you can intercom. I mean, you can, you can basically do that um, there is a little button in the home app already, uh, Alexis. So I'm not sure if you're talking about something different, but the, each room has a little icon in the top corner of your, let me see if I can, oh wait, that's on my iPad. I got too many things going on. Okay. So I was going to try to show you on my iPad, but yeah, if you go into the home app in the top right hand corner, there should be a little icon. looks kind of like a equalizer or something that should allow you to intercom directly into that room. So I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about or if there's something else you're looking for, but you might already be able to do that. It's kind of, it's kind of overlooked depending on how you use intercom, but it's kind of cool. So if you're in a specific room, like on the iPad, you can just intercom into that specific room by using that little button there. Referring to the convert to shortcut in home app. Oh, okay. So convert to shortcut. Ah, uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. That would be nice uh, so you could use basically like Siri messages, custom Siri messages in your home automations. Yeah, I get it. That seems like something they should be able to add. Yeah, maybe they will. I, that would be really awesome. If they did, I doubt it would be something that would be get you know mentioned in the keynote or anything, but maybe that's something we'll uh, find was just kind of added in the shortcuts or home app in uh in one of the betas that would be awesome 
Yeah. So the yeah shortcuts, you know, really you can't you can't run personal shortcuts from your home hub, and that's the reason you have way more options in shortcuts. But I do think that intercom action should be one. It seems like that should be able to run from your home hub. So hopefully they'll add that. I really don't know why they wouldn't be able to add that one. I get it with most of the other ones actions, but it does seem like they should be able to add that one. You know. Uh, so let's see a couple of things real quick. Oh man, my stream deck. All right. I got, I'm going to have to change this over here on the back end, but let's see screen. Okay. A couple of things we'll run through real quick and then we'll do some Q and a, you guys can just fire away questions if you like, and I'll do my best. Uh, I saw over on HomeKit news. So it looks like, um, possibly a new, another hub. It's funny because people thought that matter was going to reduce the need for hubs. <laughs> it seems like we just get more and more hubs, but this is a hub from Zimmy smart. Supposedly this was just like kind of seen, um, as being listed on the CSA's website. So this isn't out yet, but just something I wanted to mention. I did do a, a review video on the Zimmy smart home kit hub that I did that, I don't know, probably at least six months ago. This basically is kind of like a cheaper, more affordable hub that allows you to connect a whole bunch of like Toya devices essentially to, you know, to HomeKit. And it looks like they're gonna have a Matter version come out. So I don't know, interesting, I guess. See, uh, definitely works with Toya stuff. Um, Let's see, next up, speaking of hubs, Akara released, and this is also from HomeKit News, Akara releases an updated M2 hub. This is just in the Chinese market, but this, you know, a lot of times they'll release something there and then it'll come internationally, so maybe we'll see this internationally. This is the, it looks similar to the existing Akara M2 hub. I think the big difference here is that this one supports power over ethernet. And again, this is only available in the Chinese market. So also has, I think, better processing. So yeah, new dual core A7 chip for faster processing times. So maybe some minor spec upgrades there. But yeah, just in the Chinese market for now. So, um, and I see guys, uh, I see y'all do have some questions. Let me see. Uh, Travis, guys, I'll do. I'll open up a and A specifically where you can put your questions, you know, right to me. And that way, I won't miss them all. We'll get to that in just a second, um, but we will get to that. Uh, and let's see. The other thing that we're going to talk about real quick is the Akara Smart Lock. So they posted this all over on Twitter and on Instagram uh, last week and maybe the week before. So I don't know, a few weeks ago, they said they were gonna release, they did one of these little teaser images or whatever on Twitter and then they kind of pulled it. So there was some delay it looks like. Well, now they're posting again. It looks like the new Akara U100 Smart Lock will be coming June 8th, uh, will be the launch. So stay tuned. I will share everything I can once that is available. Um, hopefully we'll have a review for you if that's something you're interested in. And also, you know, a discount code, usually Acara uh, provides discount codes when they launch a new product. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned and I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to sh share, be sure to share that. <laughs> Say that three times fast, but anyways, that's nice to see. It looks like uh, just a slight postpone uh, that they did there with that lock. But yeah, that's next Thursday. Thank you, Lone Star Trent, next Thursday. Uh, and hopefully it won't get delayed anymore. I assume since they're posting again an actual date that it will definitely be released on that day. So, um... A lot of questions rolling in here, guys. <laughs> All hubs should have PoE would make my life easier. Yeah, that would be nice. 
That would be nice. <laughs> Lone Star Train says, don't don't jinx it, Shane. Lone Star Train, you're looking forward to that um, Akara lock, huh? I really like the lock from Akara, Juan says. I love how Akara posts a launch thinking we can't guess what it is. I think, you know, I think Akara is, is kind of smart in this. They're one of the few companies that do this. I don't think that they don't think we can't guess what it is. I think they know 100% that we know what this is. <laughs> you know, it says in there, this image is for illustration purposes and does not represent the final product, obviously. But it says one tap to open. You see a little fingerprint scanner, most likely right there. Some buttons, a keypad. There's even a lock right there, a keyhole. So it's clearly a lock. I think they know exactly what they're doing. They're getting us talking. They're getting us excited. Um, kind of like a little movie preview or something for a smart home product. I think it's pretty smart marketing, actually. Uh, will it be available in Europe too? I don't think so. I think this is just a North, North American lock because it's for the standard deadbolt that's in you know the US and in North America. There is a different one. What is the name of that one lock? It's in, that's available in Europe and I'm not sure exactly where in Europe it's available. Let me see if I can find it. It's, I think it's the A100. Let's see, yeah. So the Akara A100 is I think the one that you can find in, um, in Europe. Again, I'm not sure exactly where in Europe. So this is kind of door and lock is more standard over there, I think. And uh, we can't get this one over here. So different locks for different re regions. Hopefully iOS will have something like Echo Show 10. Home screen be more useful to the household. I would like I would like that. And I'm wondering, you know, since we're seeing these kind of leaks with the uh, the home lock screen of the phone, maybe come to the iPad one day. I wonder if that's going to be kind of their way around releasing a dedicated product for that. I don't know. I'd still like to see a dedicated product for a smart home display. I just don't. I don't know that we'll see it anytime soon. So, uh, all right, so with that said, let me create a, let me unpin this and I'm gonna pin a q and A. I think that's all the major stuff that we really had to talk about. It wasn't a whole lot of news. We had a lot of stuff last week, um, but this week, not a whole lot, I guess, leading up to WWDC. So I'm gonna add a Q&A. Uh, and you should be able to find this pin to the top once I do it. Uh, let's see. Q and so you can submit a question there. You should see a Q&A pop up at the top of the chat there and you can type in your question there. That way I won't mess, miss it. So go ahead and pop those in there and then I'll do my best to kind of go back and forth between the chat and the uh, Q&A. So let me see, let me move some things around over here. Let's see. And yeah, I don't really have any uh, big projects either that uh, that anything new from last week. Uh, I know, like I said, I was traveling over the weekend and let's see, I will be installing some new matter shades this week. Hopefully, yeah, this week that should happen. And let's see, any new things, any new projects? It's really it that I have on my list. Any Any only real installation kind of thing I've got going on that I can think of. Um, let's see. All right. So let me tr jump over this Q and a, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying. I got to go back and forth between my tabs. So I'm going to try to keep both open so I can still respond to your comments here. See if I can multitask here. <laughs> um, all right. Question. Will Apple home ever be able to change scenes and matter lights and not just basic colors. Yeah, I don't know what'll happen in the future. I think uh, eventually, I hope so. So far we haven't seen this with any of them. So even 
like the Nano Leaf stuff, the Nano Leaf Matter Lights, which normally have really good integration into, well, I say really good. They're one of the few that actually allow you to bring in like scenes and stuff like that, like uh, effects as scenes into HomeKit. So I'm assuming that's what you're kind of asking. And so far, that doesn't seem to be possible. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Nanoleaf is working on that. That's probably something that they want to work out. So if I hear any news, I will definitely share. But it seems like Nanoleaf would probably be one of the first ones that would make that happen if possible. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones. But like the Govi scenes and stuff from their new matter light strip can't be brought into it. Uh, I, I think it's just a limitation of matter and I don't know if maybe there's some workarounds where you can get home kit scenes like from the manufacturer's app, get those scenes brought into home kit like Nano Leaf has done. But hopefully, how was your day? Thank you for asking. My day has been very, very good. Uh, somewhat productive. <laughs> I've been getting some things done. Not as productive as I'd like though. Uh, definitely got some stuff. I'm actually, I actually have a box uh, or not, not a box, a stack of boxes over here off to the side that uh, I've got to unbox and uh, see what's inside. I think I have an idea of a few, but got a few new packages in the mail uh, while we were gone over uh, out of town. So I might unbox those over on Instagram later or something, do something a little, a little different, see what's in there. But yeah, my day has been good. Like I said, it's been nice, nice weather here, so I can't complain. Do you plan on messing with the Hoobs Pro? Uh, Kyle, I will, I'd like to, I'd like to see what it's all about. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, I haven't heard, I don't have one yet and I've got to, you know, I got to see if I'll be able to get one and everything like that. I know production is, is limited. I did not pre-order one. They're very expensive. Um, but if I'm able to get a hold of one, I would definitely like to try it out. I know there's some more products like this, similar to the Hoops Pro coming out. You've got Hoops Pro. Hubitat has their recent one, but it's a little bit different. Uh, it doesn't support Matter yet, but Hoops Pro will. And there's also the, um, oh, what's the other one? Oh, come on, guys. Uh, Homey Pro is another one. Very similar type of products, I, I think. So, yeah, I'm really curious to see where these all go and, and would like to check them out. Uh, let's see. All right. So let me jump back to the live chat. So uh, again, guys, questions, drop them in the Q&A up top. You should see a pinned comment up there. It says submit your question. So tap on that, submit your question there. That way I don't miss it. Um, can you share your wallpaper setup? <laughs> uh, are you talking about my wallpaper setup, Jimmy? I'm not sure. Uh, da, 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 da. and which wallpaper for, yeah, not sure. Let me know. Uh, Kevin says, question, can you set Philips Hue scenes to run in a home kit automation? I only see color choices even when converting to shortcut. I don't think you can, Kevin. I'm not the biggest expert on Philips Hue. I don't do a lot with Philips Hue anymore. I've only got like really two two or three lights in my house that are Philips Hue, but I don't think you can convert the scenes uh, from the Hue app over to HomeKit or the Apple Home app like you can with Nanoleaf. I don't think that's possible. At least it wasn't last time I tried. But there might be some people in the chat that uh, have a little more experience with Philips Hue than I do, because like I said, I don't use them for a whole lot these days. All right, back to my question tab uh, Brian says yes you can so manually program an Apple home scene that mimics the hue scene colors okay uh, Lawrence said so maybe you can do that uh, da, da, da. but you can't create scenes just for one device so maybe some workarounds there for you Jimmy oh, or not Jimmy sorry Kevin <laughs> Uh, let's see, you plan on messing with hoops? Oh, I know. 
Uh, Brian, what's going on? Brian, how you doing? I don't know if I said hey to you. I hope you're having a good week so far. Uh, with the FP2, I've noticed that it has no trouble noticing me as I enter a room, but it does have problems when I exit and doesn't recognize me as exiting the room. Any ideas? I don't know, Brian. I'm not sure about that. Uh, so I've been using my FP2 primarily with um, zones. So I have, you know, I have it set up with zones and I haven't been using it just in general, like as a general present sensor, which you certainly can do. Definitely easier to set up that way. Uh, so I'm not sure, but with my zones, my automations with my zones, it does really well for me. I have not had issues with that. Excuse me, uh, I have a couple setups. So I've, I've, I think we might've talked about this a little bit. Excuse me, but I've moved mine to some different rooms and now I'm using it in like my main area and it's doing much better uh, since setting up some zones and stuff in the main area of my house where I have kind of open floor plan. I think some update came. I don't know what happened, but it's, it, it was giving me some issues there because it was so open, I felt like, but now it's doing much better and I was able to set up some zones and they work really well. I've got lights that come on when I enter a zone and go off when I leave the zone, when there's no presence in that zone. And they work really well, just like they did in the studio, if you remember that video. So I, I really don't know, um, other than there is a way, one suggestion, there is a way to set up um, an enter and an exit zone in your, in the Akara app. So if you haven't done that, then maybe that would help. That kind of, I think, using the, specifically the enter or exit zone, um, it's like where you set up the boundary. You can, it's in the, it should be in the same area. So maybe that would help. Let's see, Brian says, yes, I've been doing zones too, but also have one automation for the entire room. Notices me exiting zones, but not the entire room. Okay, I see. So that's interesting. I would try, see if you can set up some automations around, um, around by using the enter and exit uh, zone. So it's where, like I said, it's where you go into the app and you can select, create the boundary. I don't know if you've done that, but it's in the same area and you can create enter and exit areas. So I think it kind of looks for like, you know, a place more likely for you to enter and exit, like appear and disappear. And so maybe that will help try that out and see if you can create up some automations around that. Oh, Brian says, I do have enter and exit set up. Doesn't show as a present sensor in the home app though, right? So I can't put an automation to that. I would have to double check that because I haven't used that in a while since I initially was testing it um, up here in this room. So I can't tell you for sure. Yeah, I don't think it does the same as it does like in a room. You would think, uh, you would think yeah, you would think that would help with the general presence sensor, but I'm not sure it might not. I know there is some automations in the Akara app for like when I enter a room or when I exit a room or when I enter for so long. Uh, so maybe you can do something around that using the automations in the Akara app and kind of time over to HomeKit somehow. I might be able to get creative there also. It might be something to look into. Uh, let's see, question, is there any way to get a shortcut to run on a lock device? My shortcut shows that it should, but it ain't happening as long as device is locked. So it just depends on the shortcut. So if you're talking about personal shortcuts, it, it's gonna depend on the shortcut and um, like the trigger and all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, if you're if you're trying to have something run let's see, on a locked device. So unless you're trying to use Siri or something, the device would have to be unlocked. So are you talking about maybe a personal automation? And that again there, that's gonna depend on the trigger. Some triggers will allow you to run automatically without authentication and all that kind of stuff. Some won't. So it really just is gonna depend on that one. Hi there, will all the HomeKit smart home stuff get more reliable with matter, most of my stuff works sometimes, if not at all. 
Uh, probably not. <laughs> um, if you are having issues now, Matter is not gonna fix that, most likely. Now, there is the possibility that you just have certain HomeKit products from manufacturers that are not very good. Not all HomeKit or smart home products are created equal, so that is a possibility. Um, I have had some that just work better than others. Uh, most of my HomeKit products work well. There are some brands or manufacturers that aren't as good. Uh, so with that said, if that's not the case, then it's probably something else. It's probably either a HomeKit issue, maybe your HomeKit hubs, you know, being out of whack. Sometimes that's a problem, or it could be your Wi-Fi network. A lot of times, you know, issues really will come down to your local network, your Wi-Fi, different settings and things like that. So, but Matter is probably not going to fix things if you're having issues right now. Do you think that Matter will make HomeKit devices less expensive than before? So I think this is similar to kind of what we saw with HomeKit. So if you go back, gosh, probably just maybe five years or so. I mean, I remember there was a point where you couldn't get a HomeKit enabled light strip for probably less than like 80 bucks, $80 US. And now, you know, obviously that changed and we've had more and more products, more competition. We've had light strips that have come down much cheaper for a home kit. I think the same thing's going to be with Matter. Um, at first, there's probably going to be, you know, the first Matter products, especially with certain categories, are probably going to be a little pricey. Hopefully, the more products that come out, the more competition will just drive the prices down in time. That might take a while. But yeah, I do think in general, it'll be a good thing. And hopefully we'll open up more products to HomeKit and you know Apple Home and allow ultimately more affordable prices. It might just take a while. So I am seeing just more and more products with that little Matter logo and brands claiming that they're working on Matter stuff. It seems like all the time. So I do think in time, uh, it's going to be good for us Apple Home users in that regard. Just might take a little while. Uh, let's see. Let me get over to my live chat real quick. Pietro, best six months ever. Thank you, Shane, and you guys learned a lot. Thank you so much for the support, Pietro, using his six-month um member chat there. I appreciate the support and thank you for being a member. And yeah, a reminder to you guys, you have, I think it's like once a month, you're able to use a little special, kind of like a super chat, but it's just your monthly member chat, um, sticker, whatever it's, whatever you call it. So <laughs> that's really cool. Thank you, Pietro, for that. Hold on. Let me hit the, uh, let me hit the confetti button for being a member for six months. I do appreciate the support. Thank you for that. And I'm glad you've learned a lot and um, enjoyed being a member. Again, it looks like we got a lot of members here. You guys go check out that Discord if you're not already. We will be doing a, uh, a WWDC watch party over there in Discord. So, again, members, jump over there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it gives us kind of somebody to hang out with while we're watching these live stream or these, uh, these Apple events. So we try to do that for each Apple event. All right, let me see. Uh, questions, get back to my questions. All right, where was I? Uh, with the new with the new home architecture upgrade and upgrade to 16.5, when I go into home app, it shows all my accessories as updating. Any insight? I do not know. So it never switches over. They're constantly updating. Uh, I do not know what that would be from. Uh, I would just, I don't know, it's hard to say. I'm not sure what all you've done, but definitely restarting all my HomeKit hubs. If that doesn't help, restart your device, your iPhone, iPad, whatever it is you're using. Uh, but yeah, it shouldn't stay stuck on I updating like that. Can you show your streaming setup? I can't really move my, um, join me over on Instagram if you haven't. I've showed it over there a little bit. I'm gonna do a full um, YouTube studio. I don't wanna move and mess up my uh, cameras, but I got my widescreen right here. I've got uh, my 
M1 Mac right in front of me, and then I have my iPad over here, actually controlling my uh, some of my HomeKit. My HomeKit setup is over here on this, but I'm gonna do a full YouTube studio tour soon, and there will be a lot of you know HomeKit, smart home automations, and devices and stuff in that. Um, in that tour video, I'll kind of show you around the whole room and everything I've got set up as well as my desk and uh, the whole setup we got going over here. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully in the next few weeks we'll have that come out. Have you been thinking about Apple TV as a virtual machine for a Mac OS? No, I have not. <laughs> I have not. I've watched your blinds curtain reviews. What's the best blackout solution for someone that works at night and sleeps in the day? Oh, good question, Steven. So uh, I like really any blackout shade. So there's multiple ones you can get. Lutron is my favorite, but they the Lutron Serena shades, but they are definitely the most expensive. They make, whether you like ro roller shades or the honeycomb shades, they make different, they even have blinds. But if you want blackout, I would definitely go with probably either a roller shade or a honeycomb shade for a complete blackout. And again, Lutron Serena, when you're customizing them, you know, just pick, you know, the blackout material and make sure you get the full blackout on those. So there's Lutron Serena and, and then there's the Eve, uh, Eve motion blinds, which are also really good. And they're probably about half the price, give or take, than the Lutron Serena. Those I like also for the price. Uh, they're not as good as Lutron, but still great products. Eve makes great stuff and at a fraction of the price. And they're still very customizable, so that's really good. You can definitely get the blackout, full blackout. You can get white, black, whatever colors you want, but still get full blackout. So I do like that they're more affordable and, um, and still very customizable. And let's see, there is also... You know, you can go really affordable with something like Ikea shades, but I didn't have very good luck with those and they, they're not as customizable. So, um, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, for the full blackout, um, my two picks would probably be Lutron Serena and then the Eve Motion Blinds, which you can order from like third-party sellers like, uh, what is it, smartblinds.com. I think there's a few different websites Omnia Blinds is another one you can get the Eve shades from. Um, and I'm also going to be doing a review, excuse me, on some matter shades here soon. So we talked about this a little bit last week in the live stream, but excuse me, um, the, uh, what's the name of the brand? Uh, Smart Wings uh, has sent me some matter roller shades that I also got blackout versions of those. And I'll be installing those, and I'll let you know what I think. Haven't installed them yet. Hopefully, I'll do that this week. Uh, maybe I might share some of that on Instagram or something. Sometimes I do that behind-the-scenes stuff. Also, another recommendation. Uh, shoot, I don't have any I can grab. But you can order these. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember the name of the place that I ordered them from. But you can order these... Um, like little channel covers that will stick to the sides of your window. So normally when you have blackout shades, a lot of times you still get a little strip of light all the way around, especially on the sides. Well, you can order these little like channels that will stick to the side of your window and kind of hide and will kind of cover up that gap on the sides. So look for those. Let me see if I can find, God, what was the name of the, I'm not sure if I'll be able to find the name the the name of those. It was like Doctor Sleep or something like that. I can't remember. It was some like off the wall, uh, <laughs> some off the wall site. But I ordered them. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to find it off the top of my head like that. But yeah, look for those if you you know if you get you some and you feel like those gaps are too much, you can find some things to kind of cover those up um, as well. So hopefully that helps. All right, and reminder, guys, drop your questions in the Q and A. So I'm working through all those right now. Uh, you can find the Q and A at the top of the chat. I see some people putting questions over there in um, 
in the chat. So I'm kind of in the question. I got two tabs open back and forth between the live chat and the Q&A, but I'll be sure to get to those questions in the Q&A. So if you have a question, drop it in the Q&A, again, pinned at the top of the chat there. And I will do my best to get to all those today. Uh, Chris says those channel things sound great. We have that very problem. So that's something we'll look for. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. And gosh, I, I really, now I really wish I could find the name of it. Um, if I can find the ones that I ordered from, I will post it somewhere or ask me in next week's live stream and I'll try to get that. Um, or if I can find it, tell you what I'll do. If I can find it after the stream, I'll post the link down in the description since we're talking about it. So in the description of this live stream, I'll post the link uh, later tonight um, if I can if I can find that. I'll, I'll go and find the order that I got them from. They sell different versions and yeah, they work well. I've got them not in here, but I have them in, actually my daughter's room right now is where I'm using them. And I've been wanting to get some more for another bedroom also. Uh, Daniel says, Shane, you did show in a car door sensor outdoor in a past video. Is it hanging in there? I'm planning to use one in my backyard. Yeah, it's still hanging in there. I love it. Works great. Um, actually been using them a lot lately as I've got the new robot lawnmower. So I've been opening up my gates and I have some automation set for when my gates are open to turn certain lights in the house, different colors, just to let everybody know like the gate is open. Don't let the dog out, you know, so it's been working great for those. And yeah, it's been, gosh, it's been probably about a year since I, since I put those out there, kind of weatherproofed some, um, some, just some basic little cheap Acara window sensors and they have been working great. They've been hanging in there. Um, Kevin says, are your SwitchBot blind tilts stable at home kit? Mine are mostly offline until I restart my M2 hub. M2. So your, uh, switch, you mean your SwitchBot, uh, SwitchBot hub two, I'm assuming is what you mean by M2 hub. Yeah. Mine have been stable. I did have an issue where one of the batteries recently died. So I have them connected to solar, uh, solar panels and one of the batteries died on one of them. So I've got like eight of them that I'm running every day now. And uh, I noticed upon closer inspection that the USB cable had come loose from that one that was connecting the solar panel. So I'm kind of looking at that. The solar panel readings, the energy, um, the battery life on them aren't what I think they all should be. So I'm kind of watching that. But so far, that's the only one that's died. And I'm kind of continuously watching that but so far they've been working great i have them set in their automations they come they open up every morning they close every night they close when we leave the house um, all those kinds of automations and stuff have been working great so all right back to my questions let's see Lee Cummings says, what's next for your channel? Have you been working on anything different? Been watching your content for years and by far top quality content. Keep it up. Well, thank you so much, Lee. I do appreciate that. And I remember you commenting and stuff from a while ago. So thank you so much for continuing to watch and supporting the channel. Yeah, it's, you know, it's an interesting time right now with the smart home, I, I do think I want to continue focusing on smart home. I do want to continue focusing on Apple home. Uh, with matter on the horizon, I think we're only going to have more things and more products to talk about. So, uh, you know, we'll see kind of how that transition um, affects the channel as we talk about more matter stuff. Uh, but ultimately, I don't know, hopefully it'll just be good for the channel because if something supports Matter, then you can use it with Apple HomeKit, which is where I'll still most likely continue to focus everything on. But you'll also be able to use those products anywhere. Um, with that said, and all, all this WWDC talk um, we've been doing, I did tell my wife recently that um, I'm super excited about the virtual reality. So I actually told my wife that... Um, you know, if I'm able to get a virtual reality headset made by Apple, that this might be the first non-Apple home smart, or not, might be the first non-smart home video that I make because, yeah, I just feel like that would be so much fun to get, a, you know, the Apple headset and do a video on that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but definitely going to keep, keep on keeping on, 
you know, doing the Apple Home smart, hub, smart Home stuff moving forward. And you guys let me know. I mean, I, I love to hear from you guys uh, as far as, you know, what you want to see, what changes you want to see. I know the channel has kind of evolved a little bit in the past, but we've stayed pretty much doing Apple Home, Smart Home all this time. Um, I'm tempted to try out some things like maybe Home Assistant and some other things, but uh, I just, you know, I love Home HomeKit and Apple Home is where the heart is. So, uh, but always interested to hear what you guys want to see and uh, try, try to do that here on the channel for you guys. Are your Matter Thread devices living up to their hype? Uh, you know, I think it depends who you talk to. I was, I didn't hype up anything too much, but yeah, Matter in general does not live up to the hype. Uh, it was really rough the first couple months, like earlier in this year. It is coming around quite a lot. So like I've got some Matter devices here, those little light up cubes. Those are in HomeKit through Matter. Uh, my Govi light strip over here, that's in HomeKit through Matter. So I do have some Matter devices that I use very regularly, those SwitchBot blind tilts. Uh, those are able to bring into HomeKit through Matter. So in that regard, yeah, it's kind of living up to the hype at this point. It's definitely getting better, in my opinion. I've been using Matter products since, like I said, all year basically, and they do seem to be getting better. Uh, the pairing process is getting better. Uh, I think now Google, the iOS app on Google, you can now pair Matter products with uh, with your iPhone, which is a big step. So yeah, these things are all getting better, and it's just you know it's going to take time for it to really uh, for us to see a real difference. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I, I think, in my opinion. Uh, Kevin says maybe the Apple VR will pop up HomeKit notifications like on Apple TV. Yeah, I know, I, I was thinking like, man, I, there's gotta be some kind of integrations, right, into Apple Home, so uh, super excited to see if that's something, who knows, who knows. Yeah, it, it should definitely, I should definitely get a notification on my VR if like, I wanna know, like especially if you're in like full VR, if somebody walks in the door, so like I'd put on, you know, notifications for my door sensor, so if somebody opens the door, they can't sneak up on me, <laughs> you know, get a little notification in there letting me know what's going on. Green Arrow says, let's see, this is the number one Apple Home channel. Do what's best for you. We want you to be fresh and interested, but for HomeKit, this is the best. Thank you so much for the support. I do really appreciate that. And that means a lot because there are some really great HomeKit and uh, smart home channels out there. So thank you for the support. I know um, I, you know, I, I started the channel because there wasn't a lot of HomeKit only content out there and that's kind of where I started and, and stuck with, just wanted to kind of document my process of building a smart home and that's what we've been doing and yeah, I do appreciate that. I'm going to keep on doing what interests me. I think I did, I think I talked about Alexa in one video like years ago and I was like, eh, this isn't for me. I'm going to just stick to what I, what I want to do here. And uh, it's working out well, so. <laughs> An idea for the channel could be mix product reviews with use case videos like the nursery one, like make a smart backyard, smart retail shop, smart birthday party, etc. Cool, I like that idea. I do like that idea. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I've done that here and there. Obviously, there's only so much of this you can do um, because it takes a lot of products and um, a lot of time and stuff, but yeah, the nursery video was a lot of fun. Um, it, it, I'm trying to think, it didn't really perform that well. Not that that matters um, to me. That was one of my favorite videos to make. Also, very similar to the video I did with my grandpa. So I went to my grandpa's house and uh, set up a smart home for him from scratch. So that was another one of my favorites. So I do really love those videos. And I do like that idea, a smart backyard. I like that. Uh, smart retail shop, smart birthday party. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, I'll have to look into some of those ideas as well. Those are fun. I appreciate the suggestion. And I'll continue to do stuff like that, I think. Um, because, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Next project, Apple Home Beer Cave. I like it. I actually... 
So I'll be doing a video showing my YouTube setup, which is kind of like that concept, right? So it'll be basically a smart, smart office YouTube studio setup. Um, and that video will come out, you know, probably within the next few weeks or so, next month maybe. Uh, but we got a lot of smart home stuff in here. But speaking of Beer Cave, I wanted to put a little whiskey bar in here at one point. I never did that, and I still have a couple things I need to get. But if I have room, maybe we'll get at least some whiskey in here, <laughs> some bourbon. Uh, smart Tech at the beach. I did do a, uh, let's see, did I do? Yeah, I did do a travel video. I did a travel video a little while ago. Um, it wasn't take a smart home tech with me, but it was regards regarding like the benefits of having a smart home when you travel uh so we did that a while ago <laughs> whiskey even better yeah we'll find some ways to make it smart <laughs> and then we would need to visit yeah that would be awesome so any promo codes for june um not at the moment Uh, let me see. Okay, back to the questions. Let me try to run through these questions and answer you guys before the end of the stream. I know we got some left unanswered. Question, what smart devices, lights, Bluetooth, speakers, etc., would you bring to the beach camping? Okay, Brian. Uh, so uh, smart devices to the beach or camping, I, you know, I don't really do. I mean, obviously a Bluetooth speaker. Um, but nothing really like smart home because, you know, you kind of need your Wi-Fi and your home kit hubs and all that kind of stuff. You're just going to run into like last thing you want to be doing when you're at the beach is troubleshooting and, you know, dealing with all that. But yeah, you know, Bluetooth speakers, I did do, I think I posted it on Instagram, maybe on TikTok too, like my travel essentials. So I have all the tech travel essentials that I usually travel with. In fact, I was at the beach when I shot that. So look on my Instagram channel for that. I'm not sure if I posted it here on YouTube or not um, as a short, but yeah, I mean, I usually take like some kind of, you know, charging device. I take my, um, my iPad and just some different things uh, for traveling for lights. I don't do a lot of camping. Um, haven't done that in a while, but going to the beach, I do go to the beach quite a bit. And um, yeah, I have a little tech bag that I usually take. Would you suggest using hoobs or home bridge on a or home bridge on a personal Raspberry Pi? I think either either or. Um, if one is easier than the other, uh, at this point, I think home bridge probably can do more. So I think I don't think you can do HomeKit secure video recording through hoops still now somebody can correct me if i'm wrong on that but i don't think you can which would probably be the one big difference but aside from that i think you could pretty much do everything from you know one to the other so you know if you've got your own raspberry pi you're setting up um you know probably go with homebridge and see if you can do what you need to do hoops is really good if you want to buy the already kind of packaged version just because it's super easy to set up but if you're setting up your own i'd probably just go with i probably go with homebridge set it up get it up and running smart fishing pole <laughs> Uh, Jimmy says, question, do you ask companies for a promo code or do they give it to you to share with us? Uh, that's a good question, Jimmy. So I will, sometimes I'll ask, so if I'm doing like, you know, some of these brands will sponsor a video here and there, you know, I've worked with Eve is a good example. So companies that I really like, I'll partner with sometimes. I've partnered with a car in the past. Um, and if I'm doing some kind of like, um, um, let me, I'm going to highlight that question uh, to do, do if I can find it. So, cause that's a good question. Yeah. So, uh, if I'm doing a promo or like a, um, like a sponsored video or something like that with Eve or one of these companies, I'll usually ask like, Hey, do you have a promo? Do you have a promo code? Or especially if there's a new product being released and a lot of times they'll have one. Um, like I said, a car usually has one, um, uh, Eve sometimes, a lot of times they will provide one anyways. Uh, when they do like a sponsored post. Uh, so if I'm doing some kind of partnership like that, I do usually ask just so I can give it to you, you know, hook you guys up best I can. And then let's see for, 
I'll also sometimes ask to do giveaways. So it's a little bit more work, you know, on, on my end. But if I'm doing, like we did one recently with the Eve. Eve sponsored a video where we showcased all your user automations, which is always a whole lot of fun. Uh, but for that one, I was like, hey, you guys, are you, are you willing to do a giveaway? And we'll do, you know, we can give away some, some stuff. And that's just more promotion for them. So that's always cool. And Eve is super cool. So they were like happy to do that. And we were able to do a giveaway and give away some things over on Instagram um, as a part of that sponsorship. So yeah, I will ask. And uh, sometimes they will reach out when, especially when there's like a new product release or something like that. So it's kind of both, I guess, to answer that question. Okay, back to my question, Q&A. Uh, are you still using Home Plus 6 on your iPad sub? I noticed the widget doesn't currently stay any longer, hopefully. No, I'm not using this anymore. So I've done some videos in the past, probably probably last year, showcasing my iPad setup, my updated iPad setup. And I used Viz Designer to create my own custom dashboard. And so I'm not using uh, iPad 6, or sorry, Home Plus 6 anymore on that iPad. I do use it for other things, but not for that. Um, all right, I see y'all. Some of y'all are posting in the Q&A some general questions here. <laughs> uh, let's keep the questions here. Uh, is it a bad idea to only buy devices with thread instead of Wi-Fi or Zigbee with a hub? I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it just matters. It's personal preference. So um, I'm a fan of thread devices, but just because the device supports thread doesn't mean that it's gonna be flawless or not give you any issues. That said, I'm also a really big fan of products that do use a hub. So um, Akari is a good example. I love the Akari products. They connect to their hub. They're all super fast, super reliable. They work well. So I'm gonna continue using them. Um, with that said, Eve products, they support Thread. They work great also. So I, I think they're both great. Um, I don't know if that, if that answers. Uh, HomeKit wishlist. We talked about this earlier and also in last week's stream. So if you missed it, uh, play it back. And towards the beginning of this, we, we talked about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, so again, WWDC. I, I am excited, but I don't get overly optimistic. So uh, I hope we have something to talk about after WWDC in regards to HomeKit or Home. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really get my home hopes up these days, but I would love to see some some home discussion or, you know, I hope they don't just say, hey, this is Matter. Matter is the new thing and we're really working on Matter and a big, um, <laughs> a big part of it. They've said that for a couple years, so hopefully it'll be more than that. see questions yes I do have the new Eve flare with thread now thread something over Bluetooth a thread product over Bluetooth definitely is a thumbs up and speaking of thread <laughs> um, the Gobi extension with matter is not available yet it will be gosh it's either today or tomorrow it should be available on the Govi site, let me see if I can find it. I don't think it's available yet. So if you go to my, actually, if you go to my YouTube video that I did on the Govi M1 light strip, I put in the description the exact dates. So it's, it might be either today or tomorrow, the Govi M1 light strip extension will be available. And then it's only on the Govi website. And then in about a week, I think it's like June 7th or 8th, something like that, the, ex oh, nope, the extension is available now, it looks like, on the Govi website. So it is today. Um, again, that's only on, so I actually need to get me one of these too. Um, wait, is that the Matter one? Hold on, before I get ahead of myself. Let me make sure. Yep, that is, should be the Matter one. Uh, so it's available on the Govi website. And again, if you prefer Amazon, it'll be on Amazon in about a week or so. So I was told. 
I have the Eve motion sensors with thread, very disappointed. They only work 10% of the time. Really have no luck with motion sensors. Any other suggestions? Um, I, I don't, only motion sensors I really use regularly are the Eve motion sensors and the Acara motion sensor. So I do have a bunch of the Acara ones because they're very affordable. If you have an Acara hub, I would pick up one of those and try that. They do require an Acara hub though, but they're very affordable once you have a hub and they work really well for me. Any advice on how to disable the chirping from Akara hubs when they arm or disarm? I have them all set to zero volume and they still all chirp. I should be able to set that in the settings, but I'm sure you've already tried that. I'm trying to remember if there's, um, I feel like that's an option, but I don't know, honestly, because I don't really use the Akara security system anymore at like as an as a security system so i'm not sure i feel like that's an option somewhere in the settings but i'm not sure off the top of my head sorry favorite motion sensor eve or cara Ooh, that's a tough call i'd have to go with a cara for price i will go with eve for um I guess uh, flexibility, I guess, because you can use the Eve ones outside, so they're waterproof, wet, you know, weatherproof, so you can actually use the Eve ones outside. So that's probably a big, and they support thread, so some people prefer all thread stuff. You know me, I don't really care. Um, a car uses Zigbee. Uh, so a car for price, Eve for flexibility and being able to use them outside. Have you ever thought of doing any home assistant videos? Basically, it's how to program, oh, HAA, a microchip to run on Apple Home Clip platform. I have not looked into that too much. I thought it was HA, I thought Home Assistant at first. Um, I have not looked into that really yet. A, a little bit I have, but um, I'd have to kind of brush up my knowledge on it before I make a video. How's grandpa liking smart home? It may be time for a follow-up. It is time for a follow-up for sure. Um, I've got to go up there. I'm, I'm hoping to get up there in the next month or so and update his um, his home architecture and just update everything and change a few things. Uh, I don't know if I'll make a whole nother video about it. You guys let me know if you want to see another video. Um, if not, I'll definitely post updates and stuff on Instagram. Um, I usually do that stuff over there for sure. But yeah, I, it's re he's ready for an update. I need to get up there. He's I haven't been able to update his architecture yet. So that'll be uh, a big one. WWDC watch party plans. Yes, over in Discord. So we've got a channel over there w for Apple events in the Discord. So all the members, uh, when WWDC is streaming the opening keynote, we will be in that channel chatting and kind of hanging out. Do you know if Abode Hub supports HomeKit? Yes, the Abode Hub does support HomeKit. Uh, not the new one, so they just released a brand new one, I think, like a cheaper one. If that's what you're talking about, no, that doesn't support HomeKit. But the two other ones, the, uh, the Abode Iota and the Abode, I, don't, I think it's just called Security System or something, that one does support it, but the newer one does not. Uh, whatever happened to the one thing you were working on with control, what room you were in and what device you were looking at or something uh, to control. Oh yeah, that, so that was a startup. Uh, if, if I'm, if I'm no, if I'm correct on what you're talking about, the, that was where they were using like uh, ultra wideband to kind of control things as you move through the house. If I'm not mistaken, if that's what you're talking about, that was a startup and I don't think they got funding through the um, uh, GoFundMe or not GoFundMe, but um, Kickstarter that they were doing. And I'm not really sure what happened to that. If that's what you're talking about, it looked awesome. I was really hoping that was going to turn into something, but um, I don't think so. Green Arrow says, I'd be down with a short for grandpa's system so all right short i'll definitely do some uh some stuff there i also want to do some updates too on the uh the nursery so speaking of the nursery uh once the baby's there probably have to do some more maybe some little short videos over there 
Quick question on the flick two buttons to trigger shortcuts. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen that new video, I get asked all the time, like how can I make my button do all these personal shortcuts? Well, you can only do it with a flick button. So it is possible, but you have to use a flick button. I did a video this past week about that. Do they require the flick hub or just the flick app? They do not require the flick hub. Daniel, and that's because these, when you're doing them to control personal shortcuts like we did in the video, they're just connect, connecting directly to your phone and not to the hub. So you will not need a hub if you're doing it just to run personal shortcuts like we did in that video. Now, if you wanna use this in HomeKit, like a regular HomeKit button, that does require the hub, but uh, you can't run personal shortcuts that way. There are no feeders, dog feeders with HomeKit support. I'm actually using the Acara dog or the Acara pet feeder. It doesn't support HomeKit natively, but it supports Siri shortcuts and it's freaking awesome anyways. <laughs> so you can definitely use that. Um, and you could probably do some workarounds to make it work with HomeKit, but no native HomeKit support because it's not a supported product category. Yeah, I wish the car buttons would work like that. Yeah, I know. I know some people are like, oh, they're so expensive, but that's because the reason you can do, you know, use these flick buttons in that manner, like we did in that video, is because they have so much functionality built into them. You know, it's kind of one of those things like you get what you pay for, like just for HomeKit support, might not be worth it unless you really love the buttons because there's other HomeKit buttons. But these things have so many integrations and so many things that you can do with them beyond just you know smart home control um that you know it, it makes it worth it i guess if you if you need a button to control your personal shortcuts it's the only way that i know to do it all right guys with that said um we are gonna end the stream we've gone a little over today it's been a lot of fun as always i can't wait for next week so we do have wwdc next week um, again, members, join the Discord. If you're not already, we'll do a member watch party over there where we'll just kind of hang out and chat during WWDC. And then we'll also have, um, next week we'll do a live stream, which will be after WWDC. So we can join, meet up here again, and we can all talk about it. And then we'll actually have our members uh, monthly video chat, Zoom call next week also after the regular YouTube stream. So those are always a lot of fun. Hope to see you guys there. And yeah, until then, we will see you soon. And hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.